going deep. I'm going deep, deep. I just almost got the shortest sermon ever. They lost my notes on the way up. I would have told like a basketball story, a fishing story, read one verse, and you'd have been on your way home. But I found them. You're safe, so settle in. It'll be a while. Um, My name is Mike. I'm one of the pastors here at Community Church. I'm happy that you're here this morning. Um, It's a unique morning. We've got the basketball tournament. I hope you think that's awesome. I think it's awesome that they let us share the place with them. They've used this for basketball tournaments for years and years and years. So for them to say, yeah, go ahead and have church down the hallway, that's really, really nice of them. So I know maybe parking's a little bit different, or I know the kids got to go to other rooms today. You know, if that happens a couple times a year, I I think it's great because it's our whole community kind of coming together, everyone working together. It's kind of what a town or a community should be. So it's cool that they're here. I think it's cool. You could support them afterwards instead of getting one of our donuts. Uh, Maybe you go and buy a hot dog or something and, and hang out and have some fun. Go ahead and do that. That's a great way to support them. Um, you already heard different music this morning than usual. Uh, it's, it's a bit of an odd Sunday, right? we got the tournament, we got the different music, and uh, i got to start my teaching time with, I guess, a warning. Um, today might be your last Sunday at RCC. Today might be. You might choose. Your choice. Your choice. You might choose it, because I'm going to be a little bit harsh today. Um, you may not like, uh, there's a part of the sermon you, just, you may not like. Um, but it's not my job to get you guys to like me or even to like RCC. That, that's not a pastor's job. The pastor's job is to teach what God says in Scripture. That's what all pastors at all churches should do. So I'm going to do that today. And, and there's a portion that I think you're, you're going to think is really pretty harsh. So I'll just forewarn you. If you it's been great if you decide you want to go somewhere else. I understand. Um, thanks for coming. Um, but before I start that, let me just say that Wherever you are today, okay, wherever you're at, maybe you're super into God, maybe you're just curious about God, maybe you're mad at God, God loves you as you are, just as you sit here today. Maybe you've had years of not wanting to be close to God. Maybe you did something really stupid this morning or last night or whatever and think God doesn't like it. God doesn't necessarily approve of everything we do, but he loves us as we are, just like a good parent, right? If you've got kids, you know that. You don't always approve of everything you do. Sometimes you're frustrated with them, and you're always trying to help them grow and mature. That's what God is for us. So God loves you as you are, but he doesn't leave you as you are. He wants you to grow and become more and more mature in your faith. So with that said, we're in this series that we're calling Deep. And it's a series I've been literally excited about for over a year. It's been in the planning for over a year. Um, I really knew we needed it as a church. I I knew that we needed to address what is deep and how to get deep I, I've known it for a long time, and I've, I've been excited. Like, this is coming. It's going to be great. I can't wait till the beginning of 2020 when we do this. However, I didn't know, I guess, just how necessary it was. Just this past week, um, I, I was out and about town, and I bumped into a friend of mine, and, and I, I have his permission to speak of this. I, I asked him if it was okay. I won't share his name, but I, I, never, I never speak of anyone unless I talk to them first to make sure it's okay. So I, I asked him if it was okay. I bumped into my friend on the street. And I hadn't seen him in a while, and uh, we, we just, you know, kind of caught up like you do, how's the family, all that kind of stuff. And he happens to come to church here, too. And um, I said, hey, I haven't, I haven't seen you in a while. Well, you know, what's up? And, you know, I'm kind of thinking, like, life sometimes, right? Like, there's basketball tournaments, and sometimes you got to work on Sunday, or, you know what, what, vacations, you know, whatever. Sometimes you miss. And I was kind of expecting that answer. And he, and he said that a little bit, oh, we've been really busy, blah, blah, blah. But also, um, we've been checking out this other church in... in Oshkosh. And like my first response, right, like he's my friend and he's been coming here for a very long time, it must be me. So I just, you know, I'm, just I'm just straightforward. So I'm like, did I do something to offend you? And he's like, no, 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 not, not you at all. We, 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 we like you, we still like you, whatever. Um, but we're looking for maybe something a little bit deeper on a Sunday morning. And again, I'm, I'm like Mr. Transparent, so I'm like, what are you talking about deeper? There, there's no place deeper than us. We're, we're the deepest church you can be. And, and I explained why I thought we were, and we had a, a, really, a really good conversation, really, really good, healthy conversation. But I, I got to the office, and I was, like, offended a little bit. I mean, I, I love this dude. He's a great, great dude. I totally respect him. Um, but I was, like, not deep. Like, you could say I was boring, and I get that. Maybe, maybe you think I'm boring, and you want to go somewhere else. Totally understand. Or you don't like that I say a joke in a sermon sometimes, or whatever. There, there's reasons not to like it that don't offend me at all. 
But the deep thing offended me because that's what a church is supposed to be. Like if a church isn't deep, it's nothing. So as I thought about it, I realized, man, uh, I haven't talked enough over the years about what God thinks it means to be deep. Right? Because we all have our own opinions. Every, every one of us has a different opinion. Everyone in the basketball term has a different opinion about what's spiritually deep. Everyone can have an opinion. That's awesome. God allows us to have opinions. But the only opinion that really matters at any good church is God's opinion. It should always be what's God's opinion. And then, like, we got to align ourselves. we got to think like God. That should be all of our goals. Every church should think that. And there's confusion in the church world about what's deep. There's confusion all over the place about what makes something spiritually deep. People actually had the same confusion all the way back in Jesus' time. There's always been confusion about it, and it's awesome because it's addressed in Scripture then. Like, we're going to find out today exactly what God says about deep, and and it's amazing. The first thing he says in Scripture about getting deep with your faith is that it's a workout. I I know that's odd, but, but look at the verses with me. It's 1 Corinthians. Remember that he's comparing your spiritual life to sports. Remember that in a race, everyone runs, but only one person gets the prize. You must run, or pursue your faith, you must run in such a way that you will win. So I run straight to the goal with purpose in every step. He's talking about going deep in his faith. He's telling us we need to run. And I don't, I like it because in scripture, all the teachers, especially Jesus, always teach using like what's around them. That's why Jesus is such an amazing teacher. So he's talking to people that understand running, um, I don't really. I'm not, I'm not a runner. I've never been a runner. Um, so it's a little bit hard for me to connect. Maybe, maybe you get it, maybe you don't. He transitions then to boxing, and I get that a little bit more. So he continues. I'm not like a boxer who misses his punches. I discipline my body like an athlete, training it to do what it should. Otherwise, I fear that after preaching to others, I myself might be disqualified. So he's comparing to running. He's comparing to boxing about going deep spiritually. Now, I get the boxing one because um, as, a, as a kid growing up, my dad had been a professional boxer. So he made me do boxing all the time. Like from little kid on, I had to practice boxing like an hour every day. And I never really loved it. I loved the other sports more, baseball, football, basketball, those. That was what I really had passion for. Boxing, I didn't. Um, and I was mostly, my favorite was basketball. So one time on a, on a game day in the middle of winter, um, we came home and our team had won. I, I thought I'd played really great, had a lot of points and stuff, and probably was way too cocky about it. And uh, so he kind of sat me down, and he's like, yeah, you know, the points are great now, but you turn the ball over twice. Your, your dribbling isn't that good. You stink. If you really want to be a great basketball player, you've got to do more than just score. You've got to be able to do everything. You need to work on your dribbling. So I'll give you a choice. This is what my dad said to me. I'll give you a choice. You can work an, out an hour every day with your boxing like you have been, or you, if you really love basketball, you can do that. But you've got to do one or the other. You can't do nothing. So what do you want to do? And I was like, well, basketball was a really easy choice for me. So literally, I would, I would dribble in the basement of our house, cement floor basement, uh, for an hour. Every, every, it was winter, so you had to be, it wasn't outside. And, and that's just what I transitioned to, because I liked basketball more than boxing. But to grow as a basketball player, to grow at anything, really, you, you can't just watch it. You can't just watch basketball on TV and become a basketball player. You can't even study it. Like, you can't get a book about basketball and read it cover to cover and memorize it. It doesn't make you a basketball player. Your first day on a basketball court is going to be deeper in turning you into a player than everything that came before it. All the reading, studying, watching it on TV. One day on the court is more than a whole life of reading about it. You you may not be a great player yet, your first day on the court, but you have the potential to become a great player because you're actually playing. You're doing something about it. So whether it's boxing or or basketball or faith or, you know, whatever, everybody can begin to train. Like like Sam, Sam Prowitz, one of our pastors, he's a big-time runner, runs marathons, everything, really super into it. He knows way more about running than I ever will. But I can still run. Like maybe not that beautifully, (laughs) A little, little chunky, little slow, or bad knees, you know. It's not going to look the greatest. Not going to be the fastest and can't go very far. But I can run a little. I, I can run to the end of this room. I can do that. Maybe down the hall. I can run a little. This is how developing a deep faith is described by God. No matter what your purpose is in anything, right? You, you pick your thing, and then you start training, And then you get more and more serious about your training, more disciplined, as Paul says, about your training as you get deeper into your tougher and tougher workouts. That's just everything. 
playing an instrument, running, basketball, faith, it's all the same. That's why it's compared. And when you first start to exercise, even walking is great, right? Like if that's the first thing you do, that's the first thing they'll tell you, right? Well, just start walking. That's a good start. You start with little things like that. Faith is the same way. You start with little things, and then it gets more and more disciplined, more and more detailed, and it becomes a tougher and tougher workout. Now, talking about walking, let's, let's talk about a time Jesus was walking. There's this time, one day, as Jesus was walking along the shore of the Sea of Galilee, he saw two brothers, Simon, also called Peter and Andrew, throwing a net into the water, for they were fishing for a living. Jesus called out to them, come, follow me, and I will show you how to fish for people. And they left their nets at once and followed him. That's from the book of Matthew. Jesus said, come, follow me. He wanted them to be followers, not, not watchers or even thinkers, or even admirers. It's not what he asked them. He didn't say, hey, sit there and listen to me. Hey, study this book. He said, follow. That's deep. Following is deep. Changing your actions. Training is deep. Your goal should never just to, to be to know what did Jesus teach. That's, that's not the goal. As a Christian person, the goal isn't, hey, let me know what Jesus taught. The goal should be, let's do what Jesus taught. That, that's what a deep relationship with him looks like. Instructions for Jesus. Instructions are always followed then with actions. So then he gives his first instruction and action to his followers. He says, fish for people. That, that's an action. We're going to go fish for people. It doesn't get any more straightforward than that. No need for a long explanation. If you're a follower of Jesus... He expects you to fish for people. Or maybe a more common way to say it these days, because we're not all professional fishermen, would be to invite. Jesus expects you to invite, right? This is his first instruction. But how do you do it? Like, like, what's the right way for a Christian person to invite another person to faith? Well, Jesus was going with the fishing theme. I'll stick with it. If, if you're fishing, like fishing, fishing for fish, it's really all about the spot. You have to be on a spot where there's fish that want to eat. That's 90% of the game. All lures and all the other stuff, depth finders and boats. and The 90-something percent most important thing is you've got to be where fish want to eat. That's how people catch lots of fish. It's just the way it is. It's the same when you're fishing for people. Some people are ready to talk about faith, think about faith, all that stuff, ask questions, debate, all that. And, and some are not. They won't bite. They're, just, they're, they're closed off. And you never know who. Right? Like I, I've been at this for a very long time. I'm still surprised at like, the people who want to talk about faith and the people that don't. Sometimes it might be a person that even goes to church somewhere, and you think, like, hey, faith's no big deal, we can talk about it, and they just, they just don't want to talk about it at all. It's like off limits. And then you can talk to someone who seems like, like really angry or like, do stuff that you think, ooh, that's kind of sketchy. But they're really ready to talk about God or faith. So you can't tell. You, you can't tell by the wrapping. You never know. That's why you just talk to everybody. So here's the most simple way. You can start fishing for people. I've said it before. You ask them a very simple question that you're used to asking. Hey, what did you do last weekend? Or hey, what did you do last night? Maybe you're at work. You know, like, what did you do last night? Whatever. You just ask them what they did. You can do that. Everyone can do that. And the beautiful thing is when they answer, they'll say, oh, last night I you know, watched the Bucks on TV. Or, you know, like whatever it is. Well, you do this strategically because usually they ask you what you did then. right? Like, oh, you, you watched the Bucks? Okay. And then they'll say, what did you do? And then you've got a whole host of things you might be able to say. I, I went out to dinner with a bunch of friends from church on Friday night. Maybe that. Maybe it's, um, I was with my community group. Or maybe it's, I'm going to, uh, I went to the herd game Thursday night with some guys from church. I did that this week. I would just say that. Maybe, maybe it's, you know, I went to the marriage academy or the midweek Bible study or the leadership camp. Maybe I, maybe I went to one of those things, my community group, whatever. Because a lot of times, if they're interested at all, they'll say, well, what kind of church is that? Like, that's weird. You, you went with church people to, to a game? They'll, they'll say something. If they're interested, they'll ask a question. Awesome. Then you can talk more about it. And if they're not, they won't. And it's not awkward at all. You just don't keep pushing it. They don't really want to talk about it right now. You can do it in a boat. You can do it over coffee. You can do it at work tomorrow morning. You can do it at school. You can do it everywhere. You can do it at your kid's basketball game. You can do it everywhere. Hey, what did you do last weekend? See what happens. That's fishing for people. And, and I didn't invent this strategy. It's straight from Scripture. It's in Colossians. Make the most of your chances to tell others the good news. Be wise in your contacts with them. See, that's God telling you to be thinking about it. Make the most of talking to other people. 
and be wise about it. Don't, don't be awkward. Don't be pushy or arrogant or judgmental. Just talk about life. If they have interest, great. If they don't, no worries. It's not your deal. You made the cast. You tried. The rest is up to God. That's not on you. If they're interested or even curious, then you can figure out the next best invitation for them. Not before. Because everyone should invite. Everyone should get invited. Everyone should be invited. If you want to be deep with your faith, this is what Jesus expects of you. He expects it. doesn't suggest it. doesn't think, oh, this might be good someday. You could possibly do this after you're a Christian for 40 years. He expects it. Here it is in Acts 1.8. He says, when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, so when you become a Christian, you will receive power and will tell people about me everywhere in Jerusalem, throughout Judea, Samaria, and Zidia. You will do this. If you've chosen to be a Christian person, says Jesus, you will do this. He assumes it of us. And then the verse is awesome. This is the verse we use for all of our, our um, ministries as far as missions. Because it says, start in Jerusalem. That's where they were. Our, their Jerusalem is our Ripon. Those people were in Jerusalem when he was speaking. So he said, start here. So if we're in Ripon, he would say, start here. Start in Ripon. So here's a, a deep biblical fact for you this morning. God wants you to share his love with the people that you know. With your friends, with your family, with people you work with. And he even wants you to show his love to people you don't know yet. Who don't have any interest yet. He wants you to tell them. That fact is so obvious in scripture. It's a simple study. But honestly, if, if we're going to be honest, we should be honest at church, right? If we're going to be honest, it's easy to talk about. Sometimes it can be really hard or scary to do. That's what makes it deep. It's difficult training. It's difficult to do. You're going to be stretched. So, let's, let's give you maybe the next action step. You can do this. The, the, the most obvious one is to just invite people to church, right? If you've been here for a while, you've probably heard me say many times, invite people to church. If RCC is good enough to you to come, it should be good enough to you to invite. If it's not good enough to invite your friends, you probably shouldn't come. Like if you're embarrassed to something, you, why would you come? You should invite your friends. You should be comfortable. Like a restaurant. It's, it's normal to invite your friends or tell your friends about a great restaurant. It just is. If you went and had the best burger ever, you're going to tell all your friends. You just will. It's normal. But if you look at these verses, if you're a follower of Jesus, he's assuming that you will invite, that, that you will tell. So let me ask a question. You're not going to have to do anything other than raise your hand, so don't be scared. But raise your hand if anyone ever has invited you to RCC. Ever. Anyone, you just raise them way up. So that is um, probably, as I'm looking around, it's hard to see the back three quarters of you. Easy. You can put your hands down. So this room is basically totally filled with people who are at one time invited. We try to make inviting friends easy, right? Like we send those postcards every month or every time there's a new series and say, here's the new series. Those aren't to put on your fridge or to throw in the trash. Give one to a friend. You can always invite a friend. That's what we say. We have big events sometimes. We even have invite cards today. They're different. For, for the first time ever, we're going to try something a little bit different with our invite cards. So you can get one on the way out or more if you want. But today, the invite card, instead of giving it to a friend, I'd love for you to leave it somewhere. I forgot to bring one up with me. But essentially, it's like a little message you can leave like on a table at a restaurant or, or wherever that's a little bit of a church invite. So take one and then think about where you might leave it. You can invite someone you don't even know that way. We're always telling you to invite. And recently, someone here at church went like even three steps further. I have their permission. It's okay to show this. They posted something on Facebook to their friends. Put that up. Her name's Amy, and, and she talks about the church. We found RCC. We like it. You know, I don't got to read the whole thing. And then it says, if you're a tiny bit interested, you should come along with me on a Sunday. You won't be disappointed. You don't need to know anything special or whatever. It's safe, she's saying. I'll pick you up and even go to lunch afterwards with you. It's awesome, right? Just put it out there for the world on Facebook. I, I, don't, I don't do Facebook, but another person on staff saw this and they shared it with me right away and I thought it was amazing. That's just them. That's how they're wired. That's how they do life. And that's a cool way for them to do life in invitation their way. You've got your own way. Maybe it's not that, right? Your job as a person going deeper in their faith is to figure out your own way. She figured out hers, and I never would have even considered it. More creative than I ever would have been. But you have a way as well. 
You know that your friends are going to be treated well. They're going to be respected. Nothing's going to be ex expected of them. So be excited to tell your friends about church, just as excited as you are about a restaurant or, or your, your new Netflix series you're binging on. Right? All that normal stuff to talk about, church should be the same way. But besides a church invite, okay, there, there's something that, that maybe are, is a little bit less obvious, but super, super important. Another type of invitation, it's in, inviting your friends to hear your story. Because each of us has a personal responsibility to share our story with other people. It's deep. It's straight Bible deep. Here it is, First Peter. Here it is, straight from the Bible. If you're asked about your Christian hope, always be ready to explain it. Yikes, that's tough. Always? What? Always? Always is tough, right? You're always supposed to be ready to talk about your faith? That's what God says, always. That's deep and hard. Always. Here at church, we, just, we call it sharing your faith story, right? You've, you've probably seen, if you've been here for a while, people come on stage sometimes and share their story or, or do it on a video. There's, there's four parts to any faith story. They're all, they're all the same, the same outline. There's your life before you were a Christian. Then there's the time when you realized you need to make a commitment to follow Jesus. Then when that was and, and how your life has changed afterwards. That, that's a faith story. It could be 30 seconds. It could be 10 minutes. It doesn't matter. But we can all share our personal story. I can, I can share my story in 30 seconds. If I wasn't going to be super long this morning, I'd do it right now. I can share it in half an hour, too. It depends on the conversation, right? You can do the same. If you ever want to hear my 10-minute my version, let's have coffee. I love having coffee with people and talking about life. I'll tell you about mine. You can tell me about yours. It'll be fun. Your personal story is important. It's unique, and it can't be debated. So you're called by God to share it. You're supposed to invite others to hear it. Listen to this from 1 Peter. You are the ones chosen by God. So not chosen by RCC, not chosen by Mike. Chosen by God to tell others of the night and day difference he's made for you. God has chosen you to do this. Once someone knows your story, how you came to faith, you might then even be able to invite them to share your faith. It's God's desire for everybody. God wants everyone to have faith. God wants everyone to follow his son. God wants everyone to be in a relationship with him. That's what God wants. It's called salvation in the church world. You would invite a, a sick friend to an amazing doctor that you know because, because you trust this doctor. Like, you got to see this doctor. They're amazing. Well, be, because you have faith in their ability, you do that. Well, because you have faith in Jesus, you share what that faith means. And, and I'm not talking about religion. Don't share religion. Religion's lame. Really, I'm, I'm the, people call me religious because I'm a pastor. I'm, I'm the least religious person I know. Religion's just like rules, and some dude sat in a room and made them up and said everyone's got to do them. That, that's religion. Faith is just your own belief, your trust. What, who you depend on, that's faith. Well, who are you loyal to? Where is your allegiance? So I'm not very religious, and I don't need anyone else to be religious, but, but I have a lot of allegiance for Jesus. I do follow Jesus the best I can. Sometimes well, sometimes not so well. But I trust him. That's how you talk about faith in a nutshell. Here, here it is. Here's what you need to share in a nutshell with your friends. They're not an accident. God made them for a purpose. God loves them. He has a purpose for their life. He has a plan for their life. God wants to be together with all of us in eternity. God wants you to be part of his family. That's all true. He wants you to know and love him, be in a relationship with him. It's all true. And he's chosen to do that through faith or trust in Jesus. That's God's choice. He made us. He gets to choose. By following Jesus, we can know God. That's faith. It's as simple as that. You don't, you don't need a giant book. That's faith. John 14, 7 says, If you had known who I am, then you would have known who my Father is. That's Jesus speaking. He's quoted there. If, if you know me, you know God, says Jesus. That's great. I believe in Jesus, so I'm good with God, right? You're good with God. I, I believe in Jesus. If you believe in Jesus, we're, we're good with God. That's what Jesus says. Awesome. But that's just the start. That's the first day of following. It's awesome. It feels amazing. God accepts me as screwed up as I am. Continue to make mistakes all these years later. Still loves me. Yay. It's fantastic. I'm, I'm super happy about it. But he also says follow. He doesn't leave me as I was. Not even today. Like I'm hoping to go deeper. I'm hoping to grow in my spirituality. I need to go deeper. Because Jesus said follow. You follow him deeper. 
It's explained in 2 Corinthians. All this is from God. Through Christ, God made peace between us and himself. And God gave us, look at this now, God gave us the work of telling everyone about the peace we can have with him. Did you notice it said work? It's a workout, right? Earlier it said workout. Now it's work. He didn't say it's a hobby or a fun adventure. He said work, purpose, discipline, training. That's deep. That's deep. Once I know that God made me to love me, once I know that my life isn't an accident, once I know Jesus, God expects me to share that with other people. He just does. That's deep. And he doesn't promise that it's easy or risk-free. He says it's work. And you know I don't sugarcoat things here, right? I'm always straightforward, even if I think you're not going to like it. Well, look at this. Look at this. Luke 9, 26. This is Jesus speaking. If a person is ashamed of me and my message, I, the Son of Man, will be ashamed of that person when I return in my glory. <sighs> Essentially, he's saying, I never knew you. He says it that way in another spot in the Bible. Like you claim, like, oh, yeah, you're a Christian. He's going to say, I never knew you. I don't know who you are. I know that's harsh. I know you might not like that this morning. They're not my words. They're Jesus' words. You do not want to get to heaven, be all excited, and Jesus says, I don't know who you are. You've never followed me. You don't want that. You want to go deep with him. And it's difficult sometimes. Have you ever, have you ever um, maybe been a little embarrassed about your faith? Like Jesus, Jesus says, if, if, he uses the word ashamed, right? If, if you're ashamed, he says ashamed, embarrassed, ashamed, you know, kind of the same. Have you ever been embarrassed about your faith? Anywhere like you really didn't want to talk about or whatever. I, I thought of a time that, that sometimes I am. I don't know if you've ever done this, but if you're at a restaurant with your family, that's not my family, that's a family off uh, Google Images. But uh, <laughs> I don't know if you pray you know, at dinner at home. If not, you should. You should, you should. It's a good time to pray as a family. Um, and then maybe you go to a restaurant, and it's weird. Because there's other people around, the waiter's coming up there, and the whole thing can be awkward. I always think about this verse then when I'm at a restaurant with my family. Because the only reason I wouldn't pray is because maybe I'm embarrassed. I, 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 I don't want Jesus ever to be ashamed of me. So I, I pray at a restaurant. And yes, so what? The people at the next table think, well, that family's praying. Who cares? <laughs> who, uh, who gives a rip what the family next to you thinks? Or, or the waiter? Good grief. Don't tip him if he makes a funny face, no? <laughs> or maybe tip him extra because you're a Christian person and you're generous. That'd be amazing, right? He sees you pray and like, wow, that's a real Christian person. And then you give him a really nice tip because he did a good job. There you go. That's awesome. You don't got to be ashamed at all. But that's the reality of faith. Sometimes it can be a little embarrassing, but Jesus expects you to show your faith. Be the same person on Sunday be the same person on Wednesday as you are on Sunday. All week long. Okay, that, that's, that's being deep in your faith. Page, last page of the sermon notes here. <laughs> it almost ended. And then I saw it over there and I'm like, huh. I could just end quick or I could go get that last page. And I like this last page, so. If you're afraid to invite others, you've got the wrong idea about what inviting really is. You got the wrong idea. You don't need to convince anyone else to have faith. That's not your job. That's God's job. Your job is just to invite, and you can do that. There's no reason to be afraid to invite people. But to be good at inviting, there's something really important. This is why I went and got the page. There's something really important you got to do first. You got to pray. You got to pray. You got to pray. You got to pray. You pray first before you invite people. You can pray for their salvation. You can pray anything. If you know them well, you can pray about their individual life. Before you invite to anything, you, you can make a list of who you're going to pray for. Like you go home today and say, these are, these are all the friends that I, would, I don't think are close to God and I'd like them to be closer to God. Just make a list. And then use that list to pray for them during the week. You could pray for an opportunity to talk to your friend. Dear God, please give me a shot to talk to Mike at work tomorrow. Uh, give me a chance to just talk about my faith. Pray. You pray before you do any of this. Let's be the church where everyone prays about this and everyone invites. It's one of our everybody's at church. Everybody is supposed to invite. And it's an everybody because it's an everybody for Jesus. Jesus says you should invite. 
You need to invite if you're going to go deep. You can't possibly be deep in your faith if you're not doing his first instruction. I don't care what else you know. It's not deep. You're not doing his first instruction. Erica told me this week, she said, each one should reach one. And I like that. I think that's a smart way to say it. If each person in our church reached out to one friend and helped them have faith, it would be amazing this year. Imagine. Imagine if we doubled, we'd even need a bigger high school. It would be crazy. Each one, you can reach one, right? We can all reach one. That should be your goal. Will you commit to praying for your friends? Would you commit to that? Start this week. Would you commit to going fishing for friends this week? Would you commit? To, I'm going to try. I'm going to talk about what I did on the weekend, see if they ask me about church. I went to ch- what, Monday. What did you do yesterday? Oh, I went to church. I got a basketball tournament there. It was crazy. And then, and then you know, I watched the Super Bowl. Really? Your church has a basketball tournament? What's up with that? Well, you know, we have church at the high school. Da, da, da. Well, why do you have church at high school? It's a whole conversation. It's that easy. Will you invite your friends? Will you invite them to church? Will you invite them to hear your story? Will you invite them to faith? We have these deep cards for you on the way out. Maybe you've been here the last couple weeks. You've got one already. I forgot to bring those up too. Boy, I'm botching it this morning. Um, so there's these cards. You can get a set of these cards on the way out. There's one for each week of the series. Today's card is about inviting, and there's some things to do on the back. Go home and look at that and see which ones are you doing and which are you not. Every time we give out these cards, there's going to be things to do on the back of the cards. And some are easy, right? Like it's easy to pray for your friends' relationships. It might be a little bit harder, more embarrassing to share your story. Sometimes being the same person every day of the week is the hardest thing we do. Right? You can have faith, and then on Wednesday, you totally screwed up. But if you're, good, if you're going to be a good inviter, if anyone's going to respect you, you have to be respectable on Wednesday as you are on Sunday. So take those cards if you don't have them yet. Do the things in those cards. And I'm going to say this every single week. As you get to the end and, and like, hey, I've done everything on all these cards. I'm super excited about it. Let's have coffee. I'll call it a what's next coffee. We'll get together and we'll talk about what's next to you, for you because what's next for you might be totally different than what's next for somebody else. So we can just have a fun time talking about it. And I'll, I'll share what I think is next for me as well. With that, I'm going to close. And what I want to pray about is that, that third one that was on the list, that all of us, can be as faithful during the week as we are on Sunday morning, that God would help us show our faith. So if you want that, if you want to show your faith during the week, bow your heads and I'll ask God to help all of us. Dear Lord, thank you that you love us and accept us just as we are. Thank you that you don't leave us where we are. Thank you that that you help us change. You help us become more and more like your son as we follow him. God, this week for each of us, please help us live what we believe. Help us to be as faithful on Wednesday as we are on Sunday. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Hey, everyone. A big part of our culture here at RCC is people being connected to one another. Connected here on Sunday mornings, connected outside of church, also being connected in in all of our midweek programming as well. All of this is made possible because of your generosity. As the Connections Pastor, it is my goal here to ensure that every person that walks through these doors feels loved, feels seen and feels cared for. Thank you so much for being a part of this community. In a few moments, the hosts are gonna come around and receive the offering. If you came prepared to give today, just simply put it in the basket as it passes you by. And if you didn't, you can always go to rccsunday.com and give there with just a few simple clicks. To close out the service, we're just gonna end with a few worship songs. Have a great Sunday.